Hey YouTube, Matt M. Roy here. Well, I finally decided what I'm going to do with this computer. I am going to keep it, and what I'm going to do is dual boot Windows 7 and Ubuntu Linux. Since this computer came with two separate hard drives, I figured that is going to be the best way to go. So uh, the main, the 320 gigabyte hard drive, um, Western Digital is going to have Windows 7 on it, and the 160 gigabyte hard drive is going to have Ubuntu Linux on it. Um, I did some research online because I've actually never done this before, and basically what the posts are telling me is if I install Windows 7 first, and then I install Ubuntu, Windows 7 will actually pick up the Ubuntu installation on its uh, start program. So as soon as the computer starts, I'll be able to select one from the other. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and install uh, Windows 7. I'm not going to show you guys that because there's tons of Windows 7 installations uh, videos on YouTube. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and install Ubuntu and I will show you guys uh, what happens. Alright, I'm back. Uh, Windows 7 installation is almost done. It says it's checking the video performance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my information in and uh, I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, about to hit the home screen right now. Um, again, I, have, I know that the only thing I don't know about this computer is what the video card is. Um, I'm assuming it's something half decent, like an ATI, maybe a Radeon 1050, something to that effect. Um, but we'll see here in just a minute. Preparing the desktop. Oh, one other thing I did, guys, I installed a uh, memory card reader from an old computer that I junked. Now, I don't think this reads the SDHC cards, but at least it's something for now. Um, if this system pans out for me, I'll go ahead and order one on uh, eBay. I can get one there for about 10 or $15. All right, here we are at the Windows desktop. Let's go ahead real quick and see exactly what video card this is, because that's what I'm very interested in. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, it's a GeForce 8300 uh, GS card. Uh, it looks like it's only 128 megabyte dedicated RAM in that, but I, I, you know what? I really don't believe that because I, I've had 8300s before and I've never seen one with just 128 megabytes of RAM. Um, I'll have to do some research on that to see if that's the truth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, Windows Experience Index real quick just to see what it says about uh, all the hardware in here. I forgot to mention one thing, guys. With these uh, Dell systems, um, when you install Windows 7, unless you upgrade the uh, BIOS, it's only going to use 3.25 gigabytes of the um, system RAM. So, just as a quick note to you guys, if you ever get one of these systems, make sure you upgrade it to the highest BIOS available. I want to show you guys, Dell is one of the easiest websites to get um, BIOS updates or any kind of drivers from. You just go to the support page. Um, in this case, I'm going to click on Dex desktops and all-in-ones. I have a dimension. Uh, let me see. 530. Let's see if we can find it here. Nope, I'm sorry guys, I was wrong. It's a uh, Inspiron. So let's go back. I'm so used to calling these uh, desktops dimensions. I'm, usually Inspiron to me is the laptop line, but not in the newer Dells. It's an Inspiron 530, not an S. The S is the small form factor. All right, and from here, you can get, um, let's see what we got here. Get details. Uh, system configuration, that might be it. They've kind of switched this up a little bit. Let me see. 
here we go. Get drivers and downloads. And what we want to do here is to view all drivers. Okay, now this is the page I'm used to seeing. We want to scroll down to where it says BIOS. When it'll let me. There we go. BIOS. Now. 1018 is the should be the latest one. Yep. And you can see right here that it is for the uh, Inspiron 530s. And there's the version. So, what we're going to do is download the file. And then run. Now you want to make sure you do this without any other programs open. As you can see right now, it's warning me that originally I have the version 1.0.3 and new version is 1.0.18. So yes, I want to update it. And that is all you do. You sit here and wait. Uh, it might take about a minute or two and then it'll just restart with a new version. Gone are the days where you guys would have to put in a floppy disk. And believe me, no easy task when most Mark computers, including this one, don't come with floppy drives. Luckily I have that external USB one in case I do need it for a BIOS update or something like that. And as you can see, it's, pro it's programming it now, right before it was checking the old. programming now it's verifying the main block now it's doing some other uh, issues and that's it now look at that update successful uh, I do have to reboot so I'll say yes and it is configuring actually that configuration was because Windows didn't update uh, in the background <laughs> while I was working on that and let's see if it reads as the new version Oh wow, look, change the the bio screen altogether. That that's interesting. I've never seen it do that before. So, I assume that the new BIOS is functioning. configuring those few little updates that I did before. I think it may have actually only been one update. Okay. Now, when I go into properties, I should see the full 4 gigabytes of RAM available. And there you go. So on any any of these systems, and I've had the Vostro 200s, the 400s, these Inspiron 530s, any of these Aradels, if you're running um, more than 4 gigabytes of RAM in there, uh, for it to see all of it, you have to update to the latest BIOS. So I'll be back in a few minutes and we're going to go ahead and install uh, Ubuntu Linux. Before we go any further with the installation, um, I decided to switch video cards. I took the um, G, uh, the uh, 5450 Radeon card out of the my old uh, Linux system and I put it in uh, the new Dell that I'm using and then I took the uh, old card from this system and put it in here. So I kind of just basically did a swap because that 5450 is a little bit more powerful. Alright, now I've moved the system into its permanent location. Uh, because my KVM switch does not have a DVI port and that's the only thing available on the uh, Radeon 5450. So I have started um, Ubuntu. Uh, this is version 1204. And we're going to go ahead and start the Ubuntu installation. I think this is actually going to have to be in two parts because I'm, at, I'm running out of tape. So this is definitely going to be a two-parter here. 
Alright, we're going to go ahead and install Ubuntu. And it's just warning me here that I need to have these two things, at least 4.7 gigabytes of hard drive space, and be connected to the internet, and yes I am. Now here, I want to do both of these. This is download updates while installing, and I also want to install third-party software. That will let me um, install my correct video drivers, and also be able to play DVDs and do a bunch of other things that are not um, supported uh, without that in Ubuntu Linux. Now my Windows installation, I have not done any updates or anything or installed anything else. I wanted to get these two installed first to make sure that they're going to dual boot, dual boot properly. Now again, this, this is dual booting, but it's with two totally separate hard drives. So. Um, from what I've read online, it's supposed to be a lot easier. I have, really haven't done too much with dual booting in the past, but we shall see. Alright, here's the option um, to, where I, to let me know what I want to do with Ubuntu. The two options on top by default are install Ubuntu Linux uh, alongside Windows 7 or replace Windows 7 with Ubuntu. I don't want to do either one of those, so I'm going to go ahead and choose something else and click continue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from this hard drive to the 160 gigabyte Samsung drive here. And we're going to go ahead and install it on that particular drive. And we'll go ahead and click and install now. Oh. Well, I guess I gotta define the root system, so let's see. We'll go to. Let me see what we got here. Let me change here. No. I'll be back with you guys in just a minute once I figure this out. Well everybody, it's working on it right now, but I am running out of tape. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, next time you see the video, I should have everything up and running. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put them both on one hard drive. This particular um, installation of Ubuntu will not allow me to install it on a secondary drive. I'm not sure why, but um, stay tuned for some future videos to come shortly, and have a blessed day, everyone.